I'm Eva Tashi, the Science co-founder at Cybersecurity Lead, and would like to share with you the key threats for the medical devices industry. Our key takeaways from Enisa Health Threat Report 2023, but also uh, analysis of what does it mean for you as a manufacturer. Uh, starting from the big picture, what are the 10 top 10 emerging cybersecurity threats for 2030? Um, as you see, the top 10 go around um, software, dependency, supply chain, disinformation campaigns. Uh, you are probably not surprised that the exploitation of legacy system and human mistakes in cyber physical ecosystem is also uh, topping the list. Um, probably what is most important for you as a manufacturer of medical devices or healthcare organization is the uh, abuse of artificial intelligence, which would uh, increase definitely the attack uh, vectors, but also sophistication, um, the deficiency of skills. Uh, we all know uh, healthcare manufacturing are uh, finding it difficult to attract new uh, talents, young people that come with um, more cybersecurity knowledge that might come also with specific expertise in cybersecurity, uh, which is also a um, struggle uh, for the sector finding skills. Uh, targeted attacks enhanced by information from smart devices, particularly sensitive and important for the healthcare sy systems, but also for manufacturing with the use of IoT, and uh, industrial IoT, we are exposing ourselves to more attacks and these um, devices collect all sorts of information. We are not always even aware of the information they collect, but this could, if not secure, uh, the device could be used very well by attackers to target their attack better, for, to make it difficult for you to spot. When we speak about the health sector in specific, uh, the NISA report for health sector looked into the incidents from January 2021 to March 2023. What did they find? Ransomware, unsurprisingly, is topping the list. 54% of all attacks in those um, two years were uh, ransomware-driven attacks. Quick note for those of you who are not expert in the field, ransomware means um, attacking your system, your data, either encrypting or just getting access to the data and then blackmailing you um, for a ransom payment. So you would get access to your systems when you pay a specific amount or you would, um, we would not publish your sensitive information only if you pay. Ransomware, as you could imagine, very, um, lucrative business, we would look into it in a minute. Data-related threat, this is more of a, let's say, a title that combines multiple types of um, attacks um, and eventually, um, let's say, the target there is not so much the system and availability, but the data confidentiality, very important for the healthcare systems, which measure and um, manage a lot of sensitive information, healthcare information, but also very important for medical device producers, which are also um, preserving their intellectual property rights. Intrusion, so brute force attacks. DDoS, we would discuss uh, in a second. This is more attacks towards the availability of uh, websites or applications. Supply chain attacks also in our focus due to its steep rise on the threat um, landscape with more than four times uh, supply chain attacks growth from 2021 to 2022. So something to look, to watch for. Malware, traditional as always, uh, malware is also used to uh, enable multiple of the above mentioned attacks. Error, misconfiguration, poor security practices, only 4%, I have to say, this is very surprising. We know that much of the data breaches, personal data breaches come because of human error. Um, we know that poor security configuration also enables a lot of the attack vectors, yet in this uh, reviewed period and instances, um, 
this is not the direct uh, uh, attack, um, let's say, um, reason for majority of the threats, social engineering and misinformation, disinformation. Let's not forget they're all linked, social engineering, very closely linked to ransomware threat as well. But what are the uh, main cybersecurity threats against the health sector? Seeing this statistic, we isolated ransomware as a major concern, um, not only because almost 45% of ransomware lead to that breach eventually, but it also have significant uh, monetary um, uh, cost. It comes with significant losses, financial losses for organization. DDoS attacks, um, they are interesting, not because they are the most impactful, but they're on the rise due to the political tensions globally, and they're used as an instrument to, to blackmail, but also to um, make a, a stance to disrupt to show power over critical infrastructure, often could be medical device producer, but very often in the healthcare sector. Supply chain attack, again, as I said, catched our attention because it's steep growth. Uh, we didn't see much of supply chain attack before 2021 20, um, when we had the major solar wind supply chain attack, which basically for a few days um, completely revamped the way we think about cybersecurity because our individual cybersecurity could only bring us that far. What is important is the ecosystem security. So in solar wind case, particularly sensitive because the supplier of managed security services network um, infrastructure basically was hacked. What it means is that they there was um, backdoor installed in one of their uh, updates with their updates of a supplier that you use, that you trust, that actually manage your security comes also a backdoor and this penetrated the systems of critical infrastructure of European agency, including also uh, US national um, agencies. So typically very sensitive organizations were able, uh, were uh, let's say breached because of a supply chain attack. Why is this a problem for uh, the healthcare sector in manufacturing in, in medical devices, manufacturing in specific is because the threat just shows how much the outside world is looking toward us. So we see growth in threat, meaning there is more and more attacks happening, but the attacks would only be successful if we do have vulnerabilities. So this is how we measure risk in cybersecurity. Is the combination of a threat, is there someone um, and a method to breach our security, penetrate our system or take our data um, is one part of the coin. It would only be an incident for us with an impact if we have internal vulnerability which they could exploit. And in this case, we see that medical devices and other internet connected devices are very, very vulnerable. They have at least 50%, so half of them have at least one unpatched critical vulnerability. Why is this a problem? Because critical vulnerability literally means vulnerability, which is very easily exploitable. You don't need special accesses. You don't need special systems. You don't need to be extremely smart with a simple method um, of um, exploitation, you could access um, the system and either change its settings, take the data or do whatever you like with it. Problematic because that means that everyone from the street, from a student to a government organization could take advantage and compromise the device and then it could be a vulnerability. Um, but what is the impact, right? For uh, healthcare systems and most of the medical devices are after all used in the healthcare system and that could lead to 19 days of disruption on average. 19 days patient care is not available. This, as we have seen in the past, is not extreme uh, case, this is Average and we, um, I can recall you the WannaCry uh, attack in 2017, which in one day 
reached 150 countries, blocked 250,000 computers. And unfortunately, big part of those computers also in the healthcare systems, in the healthcare facilities, um, in manufacturing, in transport, basically there was no one spared from this attack. Um, why um, is this problematic? Um, if we look into the into the details, um, we can see that the riskiest medical devices, and again, this is a combination not only of the vulnerability, but also of the threat that we have seen earlier, are the nurse call systems, maybe very naive, very small, unimportant device, but still IoT device, part of a system which could then be a gateway for um, and penetrating the network of the hospital. We've seen that 39% of these nurse call systems haven't patched critical vulnerability, those very easy to uh, access, and 48% of other unpatched vulnerabilities. This is data from ARMY's study. Infusion bomb goes second with 27% of critical vulnerabilities unpatched and 30 of others. And medical dispensing systems, as important as you know, uh, they are um, subject to very low percent of critical unpatched vulnerabilities, yet a huge um, bulk of other unpatched vulnerabilities, which means that they might be to a certain extent less vulnerable to a random person on the street uh, learning how to hack, but they are uh, they provide a wide range of entry points for anyone with a little bit more skills or access to the system to uh, compromise its security, its confidentiality, or its availability of the system and of the network and, and all other devices and systems on the network. Again, connectivity is a bliss when it comes to productivity, but also a um, nightmare when it comes to security. Above all, it's not only the devices we say, it's everything connected, it's the network, but it's also the operating systems which run on these devices. And the um, ARMY study again found that 90% of those devices analyzed run unsupported operating systems. Going back, circling back to WannaCry case where uh, Windows XP uh, users with even if only 2% of the, of the global population um, they were not, literally, Microsoft were not able to help them. They, the, the, the operating system was not supported anymore, which meant that the moment uh, that a patch was existing for this significant vulnerability, which allowed the WannaCry um, mass uh, destruction, Microsoft couldn't deploy it on these uh, unsupported systems, and the users, therefore, remained hopeless. They had no one to help them. They had to revamp their whole systems and infrastructure to be able to do something better about their security. And what is the unfortunate part uh, is that those systems were a uh, very large portion in healthcare organizations, which meant that even if seemingly small percentage of unsupported systems on the market, they had a huge impact uh, because of where they were utilized. Again, healthcare system, very, very sensitive and with sometimes obsolete systems and devices, which makes it very difficult to secure. When we said that those attack as well is a problem, um, it is a problem because it uh, eventually um, impacts the availability. It could be availability of... Um, of the manufacturing website could be availability also of the system which are used to book, uh, to plan, to make orders for upcoming uh, deliveries of medical devices or biopharmaceutical products. It could be also the patient um, registration form. It could be also the uh, website which allows for registering vaccines or which allows for um, booking appointment in the hospital. So even if seemingly 
um, less problematic because it just means that website or the system is not available for a bit. Uh, it is problematic because it could prevent access to healthcare. It could prevent um, supplies of uh, and the orders of manufacturing um, for medical devices. Um, it also catch our attention, as we said, because of its increased growth uh, due to um, pro-Russian hacktivism, for instance, used very much in political uh, battles, uh, pointing a finger to this or that organization, punishing. Often we hear um, hospitals and authorities were targeted by hacktivist group in early 2023 in Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, Spain, because... Um, some hackers didn't like the stance that the European Union took on the side of Ukraine. So with growing um, political tensions, uh, with growing um, split of society, of, of uh, extremist beliefs, um, the more we expect that this type of attack would grow. But when we come back to the target, so those are the threats who is suffering. Um, mostly hospitals, as you could see from this graph, the 89 cases of all observed were hospitals from the period of two years um, studied by Anissa. Um, as a general summary, you see um, healthcare providers were the majority, but about half of the cases and all others, including pharmaceutical industry, research entities, um, healthcare supply chain and service provider, medical devices, biotechnology, manufacturers are also in the mix. So combination of those different types of manufacturers of medical devices um, is reaching almost 50% of all the target cases, even if we know hospitals are still the primary target. But when you have you suffer a cyber incident. Remember, incident only produced when you have a threat, and we've seen the threat is growing, but also vulnerability. And unfortunately, we see medical devices are still very vulnerable. What is the impact? So very likely scenario, we get breached. What will happen? Breach of or theft of data? Most likely, at least statistics show this is what happened in 43% of the cases in the observed period of two years. Disruption of non healthcare services in 25%. One can imagine this is more of production lines. It could be um, linked to um, accounting, it could be linked to uh, marketing, and so on. But also, 22% of cases are disruption of healthcare services. What does it mean? We are up for a challenge that we have a duty of care to solve for our patients, for our society. Reputation, no harm, small percentage patient safety, even if seemingly 3% seems small, um, making uh, finally the analysis that it is about a threat that we know today very well, what is the threat? Vulnerabilities that we also know and we can fix uh, still living 3% chance of safety for our patients seems to me unacceptable. We could do better. Disruption of non-essential services, financial and regulatory losses are also a very uh, small percentage of the impact. We discussed uh, the biggest uh, threats or the most intriguing coming in um, who speed to us today uh, in 2024, but there are still more traditional old um, threats like malware, data loss, and corporate spyware, which we should also protect against to be able to increase the overall level of security. Um, let's not forget with the EU, we have a wave, significant, um, in, let's say, uh, movements and uh, increase of regulatory requirements linked to cybersecurity, including for medical device manufacturers in the new EU. Um, MDR, medical device regulation. Uh, with these specific requirements, mm, there is also the risk of um, regulatory measures, uh, breaches, um, actions, and fines. Um, we many quote here medical device regulation because it's specific for the sector, but network information security 
to directive NIS2, also that is coming into effect um, at the end of the year in different member states who implemented it in national law, would also include manufacturers in general. So you don't need to be, well, medical device regulation, look at the security of uh, the device and how it was developed and how it is maintained and how it is communicated. Um, the needs to look more into the processes. Do you have security policy? Do you have encryption? Do you have vulnerability management? Do you notify incidents? Mm, and um, additional regulation like the Cyber Resilience Act, which is going to impact all connected devices in around 2017, uh, uh, 20, um, even if you don't classify as a medical device uh, producer, Mm, would you be producing any device which is internet connected um, and sold in the EU market? You would still have very robust security requirements to implement, to be able to sell. And it doesn't come as a surprise that uh, regulators are putting measures in place for the manufacturing sector in specific because it is a significant target um, and risk factor. Famous ransomware payments, we discussed them, they are um, in the millions, um, while the manufacturing sector is also the most extorted industry from ransomware. 30% of the attacks are um, successful attacks are on the manufacturing sector. Mm, again, if there were no impact uh, of these attacks, one could say, okay, we can live with the risk, but unfortunately, financial uh, and business operation disruption impact of ransomware could be significant. Uh, it was on average 1.5 million uh, ransomware payment in 2023, uh, which is a significant increase compared to the previous year. So almost double. Um, and last but not least, it doesn't guarantee that there is no business disruption. It doesn't guarantee that there is no data leak, even if you pay. You could have a look at our video with Patrick Wheeler, which deep dive into the topic of how to act and what are your options and best choices when you are attacked, when you are subject to ransomware claim. And again, similar to the healthcare sector, um, for manufacturers, that related threat data so like malware are on the rise. What can we say and do? For you why are we raising the bell we can support you assess your risk not only by the generic threats that are to your sector to your industry and link to your partners and suppliers but also what are your security measures in place how adequately are you protecting yourself from the threat we can do this for you for your product or for your partner so that you would have a complete overview of your cybersecurity risk posture and know which are the pain points and low hanging fruits to attack to improve your security. Um, this is why we are not uh, kidding when we say help you improve in the most efficient manner your cybersecurity because we have your interest at heart and we know security is not a per person its own. Um, we don't want you to do unnecessarily things because then again, security industry comes uh, to be blamed for big spendings with zero impact. We want to see what has the most impact for you with the least uh, disruptive budget possible. And last but not least, we are specialists in regulatory affairs. We do um, specialize in compliance with EU regulations, MDR, needs to Cyber Resilience Act that is upcoming but also international standards, which would help you um, comply with your regulations in a smooth and also transparent way. So we help you make cybersecurity compliance easy. Contact us at info at cyan.eu. You can get a free consultation and learn more, but you should also follow us on LinkedIn for news, updates, and interesting content on YouTube cyan-cybersecurity for educative videos like this one on all the topics of how to protect yourself and against what.